Hello, I'm Dr. Abstract, and this video is for people who want to learn code and for people who want to teach code. JavaScript's one of the most popular, if not the most popular, languages in the world. And recently, there's been a new development called the Canvas, which provides another way to use JavaScript. So initially, JavaScript was used with HTML tags to make information type sites uh, th that we all know um, on the internet. Well, the canvas came along about 10 years ago and allows you to make art and make games. It's a very visual version of using JavaScript and it's a lot of fun. So I would recommend learning how to code JavaScript on the canvas because it is more visual, especially if you have left and right brain learners. Uh, it's good for both. So I'd like to take you through what it's like to program on the DOM in JavaScript and what it's like to program on the canvas in JavaScript. Uh, just say right now, the canvas is actually an HTML tag on the DOM, but we treat it a little bit differently. It's really just a big image that we code with, with JavaScript. I'm going to be using the JavaScript canvas framework called Zim, which I created. And generally, we would use a framework when we work on a canvas, and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. But first, I'd like to take you through some HTML code. So I'm here in an editor called VS Code. And in VS Code, we can type the words HTML and choose this HTML5 thing here and get our template uh, that we'll use. So this video isn't really about how to uh, do HTML. You may have already done a little bit of HTML uh, and, and we're working primarily with JavaScript right now and not really HTML, but we, it's gotta, it's gotta, we've got to do a bit of both. So in the body here, we will make a button, a button. Uh, there we go. We'll give this button an ID so that we can access it with JavaScript and that is ID equals button. And we'll put a word in there that says press. We'll make another HTML tag. Uh, we'll just use a div here, not a div, a div. And we'll give that an ID of equals, how about um, greet? And in here we will say hello. Okay, so let's see what we have now. These are the HTML tags. I'll open up in a default browser, uh, which by the way was a uh, what do they call it, a component in VS Code that allows me to open it up in a browser there. And there we go, we could press a button, not much happens at the moment, and that's our HTML page. Now to work in JavaScript, we come up into the head, usually type a script, enter, and in here we can start to access these, but the thing is, they haven't loaded up here yet, so we have a choice. We could take the script and put it down underneath. That's what a lot of Europeans do. Uh, in North America, we tend to still put it up here. The script is, oh, so important. Let's put it up top. And what we do is we make an event that finds out when these tags are loaded. There's an event on the document called a um, load loaded event, I think it is, but we don't use that because that means it's waiting for all of the images to load as well. So what we want is a different type of event and that's on the window. So window dot, and here's how we do it, add event listener. So um, the point of this video is to sort of talk about the differences between coding JavaScript on the DOM and coding JavaScript uh, on the canvas with, with the framework. So here's one of the differences. We have, unfortunately, something that we use all the time, a three word method. This is called a method on the window. Add event listener, it's like, oh. So that's quite lengthy and a little unruly. The type of listener is a DOM content loaded. That is also quite unruly. And not only that, all the other, all the other event names are lowercase. 
So if you have a mouse down, it's mouse down. No camel case, all lowercase, one word like that. All of them are lowercase, except, as far as I know anyway, except for DOM content loaded. <laughs> and I guess that's a, the DOM stands for Document Object Model. And I guess they thought that being an acronym that they could not possibly lowercase it, so be it. And then they decided to go to camel case after. So that's a little bit unruly as well. Uh, that's the type of event. And then we would call an arrow function. Uh, I just type in AF. Well, let's do it together. Two round brackets uh, and then two squiggly brackets. You see how it kind of looks like an arrow and a dumbbell there. Anyway, that's where we would usually code right in there. Here's where we're going to code. We don't have to do it that way. If we wanted to, we could so call um, something here like, I'm ready. Let's code. And then down below, we could go function ready. And here's where we would do our code. So that's kind of a two-step process. It's a little bit simpler to understand. But a lot of the times, we code with a, an arrow function. Here. Okay, that's new to ES6, uh, the latest version of JavaScript. <laughs> All right, so that's where we code. And now we have to access these things down here. Um, for instance, we can find out when we press the button with another event. And that would look like this. Document. To get access to that, we go document.get element by ID round brackets, and then the ID is a button, and we put that in there as a string. So that gains us access to the button, which also is not very pleasant. Most programming languages, you just say, hey, what's the object? And, and you get it, as in, I would say, button, <laughs> and, and we're done. Uh, but in, in JavaScript on the DOM, uh, it actually used to be kind of like that. We used to be able to just go document that button, but they stopped letting that happen. And now we have to use this get element by ID, which is a four word method that we use all the time. Uh, it's also confusing because often we would go ID almost like an, uh, that's kind of look, looks like an acronym, but we tend to use ID like that as well. Although this is an abbreviation. ID and we always forget which one it is. Anyway, blah bitty blah. So that gets us access to the button and then we dot add event listener onto that again. <gasps> Sigh. And the event listener, we can do either a click or a mouse down. Uh, we'll do a click. And then we call this arrow function like that. I can do, I, I've installed another one of these extensions in VS Code to be able to just type in AF for arrow function and it makes that for me. Okay, so there we go. Great, we've now added a listener for when we press on the button and let's change the text. So that would be document.get element. There is, uh, there, there are these code completions that pop up there for us. So that can make these a little bit easier. There's also a library called J a jQuery, which is very famous that also makes this very easy. That's, that's why jQuery became famous is because this is not really that pleasant to look at or to use. Uh, anyway, document.getElementById and we are getting the greet here. Greet, oh, not green, greet dot. And here we are about to say what, how we wanna change this text. Uh, maybe the property would be dot text is equal to or dot content is equal to or dot value is equal to or something like that. But you would never in a million years guess what it is. It is dot inner HTML is equal to. Um, okay, and we could say goodbye. <laughs> oh, as a string. Okay, so there we go. This will update the inner HTML, which means there probably is an outer HTML too. I don't think I've really ever used an outer HTML. Um, and let's have a look and see if this works. Oops. Put a semicolon there. We don't totally need the semicolon, but good practice. Okay, so we save this up and pop on over to here, refresh. And now when I press the button, it says goodbye. So 
press the button and it says goodbye, yay. And HTML tends to be used for making, well, you know, web pages, which are often information based, uh, just a bunch of text and images perhaps. Sometimes HTML is used to make that a bit more dynamic, such as open and close sections, uh, possibly drag something to a shopping cart. But in general, it's good for making big sites and pages of, of text and images that kind of wrap and flow and, and that kind of thing. That's kind of what it was made for. It wasn't really made for making games and art and puzzles and fun things like that. So, so it doesn't really work very well, first of all, with, with numbers. Um, it, 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 we use HTML and JavaScript in combination with CSS uh, quite often. So for instance, with here, if we wanted to change the color as well, um, it would be something like, we would gain access to the greet again. So we're going to change the color of the greet, which means we probably want to store that in a variable const uh, message or well, call it greet is equal to. And then we'll take this right here because we're going to reuse that. Paste it there. So now we have a greet that was just um, accessed and we can get greet is equal to inner or greet.innerHTML is equal to that. And we can also say greet dot, and if we want to change the color of this or the background color, we would set a style of that. And kind of unfortunately, we have to go to the style of that and then go color. So that's a, a two-step process, which is sort of unfortunate. And then we can set our color, which might be yellow. Oh, sorry, that, that would be the color of the text. If we want background color, it's background color, like so, yellow. And let's have a look and see if that works. Ah, uh, the, the div there is a block, which means it will extend all the way across, uh, and that's what causes the press here to go on the next line. So we're going to have to do a couple things if we don't want that. Uh, one is we can set the style of this. No, just do it here. Style is equal to mm, display colon inline dash block right there. And that's kind of unexpected as well. And that will treat it as a box that just goes around the word, at, the, at which point we'll also need, if we refresh here, did I save that? Yeah. Uh, I haven't saved it. Save. And come on over here. If I refresh, that means it's now treated like a little block there, but press now goes next to it. So we would want to add a BR here, for instance, and push that down. So there we go. Now we have goodbye having a color on it as well. But that's one thing is because we're working combination with style or with CSS, I sort of understand why they did that. CSS has a whole bunch of properties and to just throw them right onto the, the, the objects, the tags would be maybe a little bit much. Um, but still, it's kind of annoying that we have to go to the style to then change things. And like I said, it doesn't work well with numbers. This, the, everything over here is a string. So that means if you have something that is 10 pixels wide or at uh, a left of um, 20 pixels or something, it's not a number. You can't just start adding things to it. You have to store, if you wanted to animate that by increasing that number, you would have to store that in or store a variable, increase the variable, and then apply the variable to the left style of it, and then add dot px, or add, p, sorry, just px with, with quotes onto it. And it's just like, ugh, arg, arg, arg. So it's really not meant for, um, for making games and uh, generative art, things like that. And there's other reasons too. Well, anyway, that's it. Uh, if we wanted to find out if we're clicking all the time there, I'll have it to my tab. Uh, if we want to find out if we're clicking all the time there, we can log to the console. So and then we go console.log, and in here we would say uh, pressing, like that. So that's a little bit unfortunate as well. In other languages, you have things in PHP, you've got echo. In, in Flash, you had trace. 
in Zim, which we're about to see, we've got Zog, which is the Zim's version of Log. So that's that's shorter. Uh, mind you, in Java, you've got sys.outline.print or something like that. So it's it's even longer, at least it's shorter than Java. Yeah. Uh, but still not very pleasant um, to do. And that's actually how a lot of the learning seems to be going on. When you learn JavaScript, or actually when you learn Java, it's a lot of just seeing values change in the console. Let me show you what the console looks like here. So we're gonna refresh. And then for the console, we can F12 or go find it. Uh, we didn't see anything there, but that's because I haven't pressed yet. So there's a press and there it says pressing. So you can imagine if you were changing numbers or doing learning conditionals, if this, then show that. A lot of that stuff would happen in the console here which isn't the best because it's not very visual. It's, it's, it's maybe good for uh, people who like looking at numbers and letters, but it, it's certainly not very colorful or um, exciting, really, to tell you the truth. As a matter of fact, I teach at Sheridan, and I think our whole first two years or a year and a half of learning Java is all done in the console. <laughs> it's like, oh no, no. So I teach interactive media and we go to the canvas right away. And right away, people are seeing color, they're dragging and dropping, they're animating their results. They're still learning to code, but it's, a, it's much more exciting and fun. So let's see that, shall we? Yay. Now, if this has been a long video for you, which maybe it has, um, you're welcome to take a break now and go get a cookie and come back and check out what we do on the console. Oh, darn, I don't get to do that. I just have to go right over here to the canvas. Oh, check out what we do on the canvas. I mean, check out not what we're doing. No, we're not doing it on the console, what we do on the canvas. So here we are moving over to the canvas. We're going to put some code here. Maybe before we go, I'll introduce briefly the Zim JavaScript canvas framework right here. So if I refresh this, what we're seeing at the top, this bar right here is the canvas and we're drawing this pattern ooh, across there. Like so, that's on the canvas. The rest of this or much of this is HTML. So here's text that we can select and that's um, considered HTML. Uh, well, it is. Um, and these, these little things happen to be the canvas as well with a component that we have. We've got a bunch of different components on the canvas in Zim that we can use as well that makes it a lot more fun. So here's some examples. This is a pen, so we could draw with this pen. And if you click this here, it will go to an editor that shows you that text. Here I am, I can drag, uh, that's Dr. Abstract. I can drag Dr. Abstract across along this path and that path is user editable, uh, like in Photoshop. Um, Zim is a framework, so it makes a frame that fits in. We have sprites and emitters and physics and different shapes that, that you don't have. So it's very visual and you can press any one of these and see uh, Zim in the editor. Uh, there's also right here, a canvas framework. Zim is a general canvas framework. Uh, with simple, powerful JavaScript that lets everyone from beginners to professionals code creativity. Code creativity is our motto at Zim, and you can read about that. Basically, we have code creativity, so we've made Zim very easy for people to use, and you can use that to code your own creativity. Yay! All right, so uh, also these words right here, Canvas Framework will take you through to a place in the Learn section uh, I'll go to the learn section right here. The learn section has a bit about Zim. There is a circle being centered and dragging. We're about to see some code like that. There's an example of it in the editor and you can press there to, to start. But the next one down, this is where that those words canvas, uh, for, um, what was it? The DOM canvas or whatever it was called. Uh, let me go back. Canvas framework right there. <laughs> um, so if I press that, it goes right to this bit about the canvas uh, right here. So the canvas is an API uh, in, in, in HTML5, which is an umbrella term, I guess, for the whole system of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. In HTML5, they, they brought JavaScript to be a language of its own that would work with different things. For instance, the DOM, that's the HTML tags. But there's also an API that works with the canvas. So JavaScript's a language on its own, and you can learn it with the DOM, or you could learn it with the canvas. And so that's what we're about to see now, is to, to go in and um, see that. 
The canvas itself is a little lower level. So it looks, it's sort of along the lines of HTML, or well, here we're, we're, well, it is HTML. HTML. We have to do the document.get element by ID canvas. It's like, oh, okay, that again, grrg. And then we have this thing, canvas.get context 2D. And that's not very pleasant either. When I saw that, it scared me. I was like, I don't know what's going on there. I guess because there's a, a different type of canvas too that's a 3D canvas that's used by things like 3JS and WebGL and so forth. Um, and then you, uh, the canvas really only lets you make various shapes by filling and, uh, and doing things like this. It's not, uh, um, it, it's quite low level. It's a few steps when really you could do that in one step. For instance, what we've got here is new rectangle. Hey, make it this big and green and locate it at that. Uh, that's another way of doing this that's perhaps a little bit easier. This is how Zim does it and we'll see. So there's been a few, libraries that have come along and said, hey, we can help you out, Canvas, because really, uh, as, it, as it says down here, it's best to use a library or framework when making interactive works on the Canvas. Otherwise, there's no way to group shapes or tell which shapes are being interacted with. So the Canvas is like one big picture. We can draw things on it, but if we want that to change, we have to redraw things on it, first of all. Uh, there's no way to find out what we've pressed on or what we've moused over. There's no containers that allow you to move things all together or scale things or rotate things all together or hide things all together. So uh, definitely frameworks or libraries came along. One is called CreateJS, and that's what Zim is built on. Another one is called Pixie, and Phaser is built on Pixie. That's a gaming engine. So those are a few examples. Um, so nobody really, well, unless you're a good coder and just sort of want to do your own thing and maybe making specifically art that doesn't need components like buttons and sliders and dials and maybe you could just um, work in raw canvas. But most people will use a framework. So the Zim framework provides easy containers and shapes, drag and drop, hit test to find out if things are hitting, components like buttons, sliders and dials, and more. And it's based on CreateJS. CreateJS gives us containers and it gives us the events. All right, so having said that, uh, let's go in and see some code. Um, I'm just right here in the learn section. There's a, a video on how to learn JavaScript with creative coding. And so that's a large video session, but maybe we can come back and look at that after if we have time. Let's go in and actually code on the canvas with Zim. So up top here boot, 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 is a code page right here. And there's our template. And so we hit copy, and that copies the template. Let's go take a look at that. We're in HTML, because remember the canvas is an HTML tag, so it's much the same. But we're going right into our JavaScript here in a type module, because we're bringing in Zim code to help us right there. So this is importing Zim from there, and that's our ES6 module format. We have a bit of template here. We'll come back to that. It ends there. And then down below, we end our script. So this is much like the HTML template as well. But note that there's nothing in here. So we don't have to make a canvas tag. Zim will make the canvas tag for us. And then um, it will make what's called a stage in there uh, that we can put things on. So we'll take a look at that now. First, we're setting up a frame. Give us a new frame and we're fitting that frame. Well, it's going to be 1024 by 768 and we're fitting it in the browser window. There's a few different um, scaling modes here. So we can fill the browser window. We can set it to full, which is a little bit different. Fill will keep the same aspect ratio where fill doesn't. Or sorry, full doesn't. Uh, and then we can also put it in a tag, much like we saw at the top of Zim there, where that was Zim inside of a tag. So it could go in there. Let's see what this looks like right away, and then we'll come back and take a look at the, the code. So here it is. And there is the 1024 by 768 that fits within the browser window like that. That makes it really easy to, to build with because we know the dimensions here and then Zim will just scale everything for us. And there's a circle that we're dragging. Ooh. Okay, so that's down below here. When we're ready, oh, this is the the color of the stage. And this is, so this 
this part right here, the lighter part is the stage. And this is the color outside the stage is this dark color. And then when we're ready, we call this function. We could have used our arrow function in there if we wanted to and done it just like we did in the HTML side or on the DOM side. Okay, but um, we find that sometimes if we're, certainly if we're teaching kids, they find just this a little bit easier to read and understand than an arrow function. Professionals can just go ahead and make an arrow function there if they so desire. Right, we're given F for the frame, S for the stage, and W and H for the width and the height. And here's where we put our code. We have a new circle. It's 100 radius in blue. We're centering it on the stage and we're dragging it. Okay, and there we go. So right away, people have something to do. It's like, oh yeah, nice, oh good. And we can see a color. Uh, right here, we could change it to purple. And then when we refresh, it's now a purple circle. Okay, and if we wanted to change our outer colors, that would be yellow. And we come back here and we've got yellow on the outsides. Oh, let's make it blue on the inside. <laughs> blue! Okay, and we'll have some exciting colors. Wow! Okay, maybe too exciting. <laughs> too exciting for you? Ay, 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 ay. All right, let's see. What were we going to do? Why don't we undo that and we'll keep it, <laughs> we'll keep it, um, we'll get rid of the circle and we'll try and do what we did already on the DOM. Although that's not a very good example of what the canvas can do because on the canvas you want to do more fun things, but certainly we can change some text. So let's do that. We'll make a new label and our new label will say, what did it say? Hello. And we'll locate that label at 100 comma 100 on the stage. So by default, it will locate something on the stage. And there's our hello is located on the stage at 100, 100. There's all sorts of parameters for this as well, such as what font you want to use, um, the size, the color, etc. We also have style on here, so we can go style. Uh, Zim is one of the only ones that has style on the canvas. And if we set color red, then this would uh, be red. And so we refresh here and there is a red hello. Okay, but we won't go into that now. Uh, there's our label. If we want to change what text it has, we'll want to put that in a variable. So const uh, greet, call it, is equal to. And then on the next line, we're going to make a button, new button. And we will dot locate that button at how about um, 100 comma 200 on the stage. Again, there's different ways to locate in position, but locate will locate the X and Y, uh, or locate the registration point at the X and Y. So basically that's 100 over and 100 down. This one is 100 over and 200 down. To the top left corner of these. And so there we've got a, bu a button and we have uh, the hello. Now if we want to change what that button says, we add uh, an event listener. So const uh, button is equal to, this is one way to do it, and we would say button dot on, which is the same as add event listener, except it's shorter. <laughs> All right, add event listener actually works, so that still works, but uh, CreateJS, when they gave us their events, they were tired of using add event listener. We were all tired of using it. So we just use an on method now, and that can be the same as, as we had before. Click, and we can call an arrow function here as to what we do, which is change the text of the label. Greet.text is equal to good bye and uh, are you ready what we do as well um is uh, this we, we've been doing this is called interactive media and we've been doing interactive media back in flash we did interactive media and before that back in director we made cd roms and we did we've been doing the same kind of thing for 30 years and this is a very logical people who are passionate about building games and puzzles and e-learning apps and art. Very passionate, very smart, have honed a system for many years. And it's made it very simple. 
Um, one thing that changed is when we went to mobile, we had to deal with the batteries of mobile devices. And that was one of the issues with Flash is that it was updating the stage a lot and draining batteries. Well, we've learned from that. And so we do not update the stage unless the developer says, or the creator now says, hey, it's time to, we've made a change. Let's update the stage, stage.update. And that conserves batteries. So there's a stage.update there. And we refresh here. And there it says goodbye. Let's change the color. You can imagine that should be pretty easy. Greet.color. Oh, background color. Background. I can spell it. Color is equal to yellow. And with a swoop. Hello, goodbye, background color yellow, yay. All right, so there we go. I, I think if you look at this, you can see that it's a bit cleaner. Uh, it's a little e you know, easier, it's quick, and, and we can do so much more. For instance, why don't we try uh, adding an emitter to that when we click it? So we would make our emitter here, const emitter is equal to a new emitter. Um, if we were to center that, so here's another way that we center it. Let's just see what that emitter looks like centered and kind of going. Whoa, okay, there's an emitter that is popping off. So what we can do is we can start it paused. So if we want to go to a parameter that is, there, there's many parameters for the emitter, like what are we going to be emitting? For instance, if we emitted a new rectangle here, or we could emit a picture, rectangle, or a label, or whatever, but this is emitting a default black rectangle. There it emits a bunch of rectangles. Um, so there's lots of parameters. There's how long it will emit for, speed, etc. So if we want to go to a specific parameter quickly, Zim has the Zim Duo technique, which allows us to use these squiggly brackets, which is nice. When you're learning, you get to learn about object literals right away. So these are objects, and here we can put in a property. This is the start paused true. And so now the emitter will not uh, will not emit until you uh, specifically spurt the emitter. So there's the emitter made. And what we'll do is when we press on the button, we will say emitter dot loc at the uh, greet like that. So that emits the lo the the emitter at the greet, and then we dot spurt. <laughs> it's kind of a funny, a funny um, command, isn't it? Spurt ten of them. There we go. So now the emitter will, when we press it. Here we go. Refresh. Press. Boop. Hey! It just it just spurted ten of those little things. It didn't spurt from the center because we located it at the uh, the same place as the registration. But we can change the registration point of this, and then it will. Um, uh, spurt at that. So, I mean, uh, we could do that. That would be uh, greet dot reg at the center. Um, that may move the greet. Let's just see if it does. We have a parameter that stops that. Yeah. So it when we change the registration point, it actually shifted the, the whole box. But I believe that uh, this is center here. And then the last one here is true. So as in don't move it when it, um, it's called the still parameter. Yeah, OK. So now what's happened is we've changed the registration point to the center. And when we located the emitter, it's, it's on the center. So registration points are some of the, is, it's a little bit tricky. But at least we know what we're doing. I didn't even know HTML had registration points. And it's done through some transform something or another. It's like, oh my gosh. Uh, let's just move along and show you a touch of animation, for instance. So if we wanted to animate the greet, then we would say greet dot. Well, let's animate the button in first. A nice, simple one. So here's the button. If we want to animate dot animate. Uh, when I mentioned transform, 
in the HTML CSS world, a lot of the animation is done through transforms, and I always found it confusing, and it's 10 times as long as Zim animation. You can use things like GreenSock, which is a, a library for animating, and that's a great library. We use that in Flash 2. But Zim is on par with its animation, on par even, or possibly even beyond GreenSock in abilities. We can animate along paths, and we can drag along paths through that animate. There's all sorts of things, and it's very simple. So are you ready? Here is the button. And we're doing a thing called chaining right now, which allows us to chain on the methods. But anyway, there is animate, and we would say, uh, well, if we wanted the button to start off with with that not seeing it, we would set its alpha, alpha zero, like that. And then we can say animate the alpha to one. And by default, that would be in one second, which is fine. So are you ready? Let's watch the button animate in. There, button animates in. Okay, wow, nice. Uh, let's now animate the X position of hello when we press on it. So here's the greet, and we can go greet dot, well, I don't think it'll matter, but we've got its registration point being centered there. Uh, we could chain on the animation if we there want here, animate, or we could put it on the next line as greet dot animate. But because they chain, th that means we can save some code just by chaining that on to the ends like we do there. So anyway, greet.animate, and here we will animate the X property to the width of the stage. Shall we see what that looks like? I think it's going to be left so that we'd be able to see what happens, uh, so that we can still see it, because it's registration points in the center. We can also set the time that we want, so in two seconds, so this will be a little bit of a slow animation, kind of boring, but let's try it out. So we refresh, we press. <laughs> And there it goes. And look what it did. It animated it so that its X position was right at the stage width. That means half of it's in there, which means we need to uh, do that a little bit more. Ready? Want to see that again? But we can fix that up a little bit, make it nicer. Shall we do that? And that would be, uh, first of all, a little bit wider. So we could add greet.width. That, that would be fine. That would make sure that it goes off the stage. It would actually be grouped out with divided by two, but whatever. It won't matter that much. That's how long. And the next parameter is the type of easing. So we could do a back out. Oh, in, I guess, because we want to see it. Uh, what if there's elastic, elastic in, out, elastic in, elastic out. There's bounce in, bounce out. There's by default, it's a quad, which is, um, it's an easing. It's sort of, it doesn't, there's also linear, but linear means it goes at the same speed. Easing is nicer and more realistic if, if, um, if you don't do linear. <laughs> so here is back in, and let's see what that looks like. It should look pretty cool, although we might want to change the time on it. You ready? We press, and off it goes. Wow. But uh, why don't we instead make it a bit faster, perhaps a second, uh, even 0.7 seconds. Ready? Pew! Woo! Ready? Let's do that again. <laughs> Pew! Nice. So you can see that we're just having so much fun immediately. You can kind of do that stuff. Well, I mean, not the emitter, really, in HTML. But uh, you can certainly animate in HTML. It's just not quite as easy and quick. We can do the same kind of manual animation, what's called a ticker here. That's like a little engine that keeps on going. Uh, but there's so many fun things to build in on the canvas that are very visual. Let's go back then. So do you like, yeah, canvas code? You can imagine that it's very easy to learn and, and yet we still got the same things. We could say, uh, if something in here, do that. We can call functions, we can use arrays, uh, const a is equal to, this is just JavaScript, we can learn about arrays, we can learn about conditionals right in here while we're building things. Uh, we could run some odds and make it sometimes say one word. We can start in, start people on AI right away. Languages are just, AI basically is using odds and having various um, options that you would do based on those odds. And that makes it seem kind of more real and learning things and applying the learning to the odds. Like uh, if 
if they do this, then increase the odds here. And so that's sort of what AI is. And we, we've got things built into Zim, which makes that a lot more fun as well. We have things called rarity, and we're using that to make interactive NFTs. You want things to be rare, so you would um, set rarity. That's, again, just odds, and you can do that with random numbers, and, and it's all JavaScript, so hey, that's great. But uh, we can do things like odds. 50% uh, we'll give it right there. Then we'll say goodbye, else we'll say uh, wow or something. Okay, so half the time it will say goodbye, half the time it will say, wow, this is called a ternary operator. And let's see what happens. Wow, there goes wow. Let's try it again. Wow again. And wow again, that happens with random numbers. <laughs> Goodbye, there goes goodbye. So uh, you see what I mean? And we can start to think about, oh, how could we apply that to AI? So I, it just gets me when people say, oh, you have to learn Python for AI. I say, no, you don't. <laughs> I've been doing AI. I'm a Canadian New Media Awards winner. I got a, a New Media Awards winner for what I was coding. I know you can do AI outside of Python, uh, which may have many things, but certainly as you're learning, there's lots of things that you uh, just right built into any program programming language. So come on in and uh, take a look at Zim. Let me go show you around a little bit here. We are in the middle of a redesign, although it won't change all that much. We're adding a Zim store to show how to make mobile apps with Zim called Progressive Web Apps. We can already see some things about that in the code section. If we go to the code section, there's our template. Here's a section on interactive animation. There's making interactive NFTs. Here's making mobile apps in five minutes with PWAs. That's, that's amazing. This is a Zim Shim for Adobe Animate. And here's a whole bunch of Zim examples on CodePen, as well as Zim accessibility. The canvas being a big picture, it's tricky to do accessibility, but we've added it. Uh, so take a look there. Anyway, I don't need to be on the code page. Probably best to just take a peek at examples here. The examples are sort of organized by what's what's new in the latest versions of Zim here up top, but it's mixed in with some fun things like more complete works uh, as well, like little games, Android uh, droid games on uh, with physics. So a whole bunch of fun things to take a look at there. Uh, but then the next section is collections. So these are batches, uh, like little mini sites. So all of the things that were new in Zim 10, all of the things that were new in Zim Neo, a bunch of stuff on particle emitters. We saw that, a bunch of things on physics. So here's Zim with physics. This is very easy to use physics with Zim. As a matter of fact, we're teaching kids to, to learn uh, physics with Zim as well. Do you want to see that? But that's uh, physics with Zim. Um, built right in. It's just basically add physics and it, it adds physics to the shapes that are there or to whatever you want to add it. But like I said, a bunch of little mini sites, how the motion controller works. There's one on the accessibility. Uh, Zim's got many components that are built right in. Here are a bunch of older components that were done a long time ago, but there's now uh, at least twice as many uh, new components. These are sort of traditional components but there's, uh, there's definitely more components now. There's interactive NFTs and a series of code pen examples. Where was I heading? Uh, where was I taking you? So a series of code pen examples. Many of these code pen examples are being brought in, uh, brought into the Zim editor. So right here, if you scroll down a little bit, is the Zim editor right here. If I press that, there's our dragging of a circle, but if you view the code, or that's viewing, if you look at the code for this and bring it over onto the right-hand side, so I'll overwrite my current stuff. So this is the code that did that circle.drag, but there's also a label saying, uh, press the code tab to, to start. And uh, the idea is over here now, you would edit, I'm gonna comment that out, and what you can do is bring in, this is a tutorial, an, an introductory tutorial for Zim, lines with the slash slash or comments. So all these are comments that we're just reading. And the idea is 
you want to uncomment the different parts. So I'm going to uncomment these by going control slash and that will uncomment those. And when I test, I've now changed the background color to blue. We've got a thing and I'm starting in on a trash can. So there's my trash can right there. If I uncommented more, let's just go to the end there or close to the end. Those are the docs for all of that stuff. So I'm going to uncomment that. That's the rest. And let's see what this is all leading us towards and test this here. It animates in a picture. It makes some stripes in the background. And when we throw the circle into the trash can, it changes color and we can recycle to bring it back. So that's a first little example of coding on the canvas. What we're doing, there's a mouse down, we're centering, we're changing colors, uh, we're updating stages. Okay, and it takes you through how to build that. But if we take a look in the zaps here, there are all the feature ones. So here's an animate feature where we're going to animate. Woo, look at that, wow. All right, what else have we got? There's the, the various shapes in Zim. And some of these shapes, although we haven't made it, but there are various shapes in Zim. But if we make, I'll just clear this, or type new blob dot center. So we have some special shapes. One's called the blob, one's called the squiggle. And if I test this, there is the, the blob. Let's uh, scale this up. Uh, so we'll go dot ska two, so we can see it a bit better and test. Now we can drag these things and change. You can also change the different types of handles like that. This is no handle, so it becomes a point and you can then change it back to these guys, whoosh. Okay, and those are blobs and squiggles. So people can make their own shapes. They can animate along. They can um, save those very easily with a transform manager, it's called. And that means when people come back, it will be the same shape. And so we're teaching kids. Ah, that's what I wanted to show you. Okay, so this is the editor. It's actually based on the Zim Kids editor. So if we come back to the Zim site now and scroll down to the bottom, doo -doo -doo -doo, past all of the great things that uh, can be made with the canvas, things like games, interactive ads, puzzles, uh, cards for holidays, infoactive. So that's like interactive infographics interactive logos, data visualization, e-learning apps, generative art. And Zim, here's Zim coming in at 37% the code of these other frameworks. And it's like, wow, that makes it easy. But down at the bottom here are the gold bars and there's school, school is for, for older folks. And then here's Zim Kids. So we're teaching kids how to do physics even. So these bugs, uh, well, they're not all physics, but this last one is physics right here, where, look at that, a little ball is dropping like that. And the next one is level two. You have to kind of try and score in there. And if you throw it, it goes up and comes down and says score, wow. And this one, the kids are learning how to shoot the bug. And if you shoot the bug into that little gray box, boing, another bug comes out. Whoa, isn't that fun? And you have to kind of try and shoot the, ball, the bugs back into the box, but it's hard when they keep on coming out and you're going, oh no. And so the code for that is right here. And there's information about the code right here, which gives us more text-based information. You can try it over here. So you recognize this. This is where the editor came from, the, the Zim Kids editor. Cool, huh? Uh, with this one, you have assets as well. So if we go back here and we can go into this thing called Slate, which is a free form editor, and you have a bunch of assets that you can bring in to um, include an asteroid. And we save that up and now we've got an asteroid in here. So new pick and we would say asteroid uh, zero two, it looks like this is dot center. And when we test it, we now have this, the asteroid in there in the centered. And if we wanted to animate that, we could rotate it. We could put it into space because we've got space pictures in here. So that's all that stuff. Oh, okay. I think I've been going on a long time here, haven't I? So come on in and, and join us at zimjs.com slash slack or zimjs.com slash discord. 
In our new design, we're taking these two things out so we can add Instagram and TikTok into here. But we're taking those two things out and we'll put them right up top here in the banner. All right, and the banner will be gone. Oh, well, we won't be, we won't have this interactive puzzle. So this is um, a puzzle. It's called the Scrambler. Uh, which means you can chop that picture or chop anything that you make and you can scramble it up and make these puzzles and it will know when you're you're finished the puzzle hmm let's see that all looks pretty good but I bet you that goes up to the top shall we shall we complete it are you wanting to see this complete oh I don't know where does this one go does everything get shuffled over no well that looks good down here uh, I don't know. Can you tell? That, that, okay, that all looks good. That doesn't. This goes down here. This goes over. Okay, there we go. There, we got the bottom of it. We're nearly there. You're probably looking on at home going, no, no, that bit goes here. Yeah, we did it. And then it uh, does the art and chops it up again. So this was uh, in Zim version Zim. We've gone through well, many versions of Zim. Zim 1, I'm trying to show you. Going back to the Zim, I think it's under the About section. Or did we put that in the News? Used to be in the About section. I can't remember where we have all our versions now. We're about to, to change them. Yeah, I think it's in the News. Let's go look. We added a section here in the About called Vision. And that bumped our archives from this section. So here's our vision right here, the, the Code Creativity Vision. But if you pop into news, uh, yeah, I think the archives are in here. Articles, community archives, yeah. So we had Zim, the very first Zim looked like this. Zim 1, basically. Zim Duo is the second version. Zim Try, Zim 4th, Zim V, Zim... And they all had the same site, so we didn't change it. Zim V, Zim 6, Zim Hep for 7, Zim Oct, Zim Neo. Zim Oct is when we introduced style. Zim Neo here is animating along paths and dragging along paths. You probably were going, oh yeah, I wanted to see that. What does that look like? So here's animating along paths. And if we want to see the drag along a path, there's the path right there. Look, I can pick that up and drag it along the path. That is so magical. As far as I know, no other framework can do that. And this is a user editable path. Wow, isn't that amazing? Okay, and we don't have to animate as well. We can just do the dragging. So I've turned off the animation. Um, so Zim Neo, and that was that one. Let's see, how do we get there? Uh, Zim Neo, then that's nine. Then we went to Zim 10. And after that, we went to Zim Cat. So we went to three letter animals. So all those had three letters. Zim Cat, then we went to Zim NFT. And now we're on Zim version Zim. Yay! So Zim version Zim is all this new stuff here. You're making pixels and a new color picker and all the ES6 modules. And then we went up through versions of Zim. So Zim 00, Zim 01, Zim 02. Those are all version Zims. And now we're kind of shifting again. We were going to go to Zim 03. But if you want the preview, here is our current thinking. Instead of going Zim version Zim 02, Zim... Because the problem is if we say we're on 02, everybody thinks we've only got two versions of Zim, but we got lots of versions of Zim. Wow. So um, here's the docs, by the way. So the docs of all the things relating to the frame. So our sneak preview is we're going to shift slightly and go back to three letter numbers. And so I think our next one works out to be Zim 014. So that's, uh, there you go. You've heard it first. Wow. <laughs> Tucked away, way on the back of a video about the, the difference between the HTML DOM and uh, the canvas. So hopefully you're enjoying looking at the canvas, but we have put a lot of work into this. For instance, if we take a look at the updates page, here are updates for the last set of the Zim version Zims, then NFTs, cats, tens, going all the way back to HEPA and beyond. 
But anyway, we have bubbling videos for each of them. Here's us talking about the change to the front of the site. There's the new editor that we've launched, Zim Themes, so you can set themes of neon and future and whatever. Uh, the Zim Pack that allows us to bring in things. So anyway, these are all the various updates, blah, 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 including any patches. So here are patches to the latest uh, version of Zim, blah, blah. Um, the Zim Shim, and there we go. So that was all the last version of 0 02. Then we have 0 01s, all the same kind of things, blah, 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 blah. So you can see, here I'll do a quick scroll for you. Sorry, I can't make this scroll a quick scroll. So this is what is getting us known as being, we fix things on our forums. So please come into our forums. Anything that you need, we will fix in a day or two. And there, I don't think there's another framework that's, that's like that. So we love Zim. We love people using Zim. So come on in and join us. We'd love to see you. And uh, I am Dr. Abstract, this little fellow here. Uh, well, I'm not <laughs> so used to the cartoon version of me. That's the real version of me. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, isn't he handsome? <laughs> Taken outside my bathroom. <laughs> Great. Anyway, uh, Zim, uh, built on CreateJS uh, in comparison to what we had on the DOM, which is uh, great for making HTML pages. You should certainly continue to make HTML pages if you need those. But what we just don't understand is a lot of the time when people um, code with JavaScript and HTML and CSS, they're sort of making things for other people. You know what I mean? It's like somebody says, I need a website that does this. And then you, you, you do that. It's almost a job. And that's great. It is a job. But you can get jobs doing fun things on the canvas as well. Uh, little mini sites, games and gadgets. And not only that, though, it's not for the job. It's for the love of coding. I love making art with code. So uh, maybe you will as well. And it's a lot more fun to learn how to uh, do code on, on the canvas. So that was the point of this <laughs> rather, rather long-winded video now. We have many videos in the learn section. I, I don't know if I took you through those again, but just go take a look at the learn section and you'll hear a lot of my voice. <laughs> so hopefully that's good for you. Like I said, come on in, join us at Slack or Discord. Uh, we'd love to talk to you there and have a great day or night. Cheers.